In this video, we're going to be talking about Atari Jaguar emulation on the PC version of RetroArch. Ah, uh, the Atari Jaguar, the most niche system I own, and the oddest, for sure. But a very cool system, and one that has an interesting history, even though it wasn't very successful. And one most people are likely never going to seek out a real physical console for, since it is so freaking ridiculously expensive these days. But thankfully, emulation for the system does exist, and it does work fairly well, allowing you to play most of the games in the system's library without issue. And in this video, we're going to be covering setting it up in the PC version of RetroArch. So let's dive in. So to get started with Atari JAG emulation on the PC version of RetroArch, you need to install the PC version of RetroArch, so you can get that in a standalone fashion, you can download it from Steam, but if you decide to download it from Steam, I recommend replacing the installed Steam files with the standalone version as shown in my Steam setup guide. But links to these two videos will be in the description below if you have not set up RetroArch already, so that way you can get it set up, get it configured, that way you can continue along with this guide, and everything will be nice and easy for you. But again, links to these in the description below. Next, you are going to need to source some Atari JAG games. There is some really roundabout ways of dumping these if you have physical carts and an actual physical Jaguar. Otherwise, resort to Google and do things that way. I really don't care which way you go about doing it, just don't ask me for illegal download links because I'm not going to provide them. But once you have your Atari JAG games sourced, just add them to anywhere on your hard drive. It doesn't matter where they go. Just put them wherever you store your games. So for my demonstration purposes, I have my RetroArch demonstration folder, a games folder. I'll dump them right in there. And with our games placed, we are ready to load up into RetroArch and download our core to play Atari Jag games. So let's go ahead and open that up. And now on the main menu here, click on the online updater, core downloader, and then just navigate down to the Atari section here and find Atari Jaguar Virtual Jaguar. There we go. And with that core downloaded, we are ready to begin playing our Atari Jaguar games. So one method of doing so is to head up to load content, navigate to the directory that you have your games stored in, select a game and it should automatically run. Now I'm not too personally fond of that method, so what I like to do instead is create a games playlist, and my favorite method of doing so on PC is to use the desktop menu, so you can press F5 on your keyboard or click on show desktop menu here to load it up. And once the desktop menu is loaded up, over here on the left that you have the content browser, so just right click, new playlist, type in Atari, space dash space, Jaguar. Oops, and make sure Atari is capitalized, otherwise it won't work, there we go. And then you'll be greeted with a new Atari playlist here on the left with the image of the console and controller. So just click on that, and now in the main box, right click, add folder, and navigate to where you have your game stored. And then select the folder for the core, choose Virtual Jag, and Database Atari Jag, there we go. And now all of your games will populate the playlist. So if desired, you could pretty this up a bit by right clicking on the playlist entry, download all thumbnails, this playlist. And if it was able to find the games in its built-in database because they were named properly to what it's looking for, new box art should populate your playlist. But if for whatever reason something's missing, it's pretty simple to get it added in. So what I like to do in these instances is head over to GameFAQs, look up the game in question, head to the media section, click on boxes, and there's typically a box art for nearly every version of the game. So there we go, I found one for the Atari Jag right here. So I'm just going to save the image and move RetroArch out of my way real quick. So there it is. So unfortunately the desktop menu doesn't work with JPEG format files off uh, default anymore like it used to. So we have to convert this over to PNG format. So just open up Paint, drag in your box art, and then save it as a PNG picture. Don't even need to rename it anything, just let it go. Now back in the desktop menu, make sure the game in question is selected, then drag your PNG format picture into the box art section here, and there we go, now we have box art for our missing game. But once you're done with your playlist creation and getting it prettied up, you can just close out of the desktop menu, select RetroArch, press F on your keyboard to make it full screen again. And now to get your new playlist to show up on the left, just click on Restart RetroArch, 
And there we go, we now have a new Atari Jag playlist here on the left with all of our games listed here with box arts on the right if we were able to find them or add them. And then to play a game all you need to do is select it and tell it to run. And with that you should now be up and running and able to play most of your Atari Jag library. There are still incompatible games as well as games that might have a couple of issues like you see here with Doom. But this being emulation, we are able to change a few things inside of our core options. So from this point on in the video, we are going to be talking about advanced options available to us within the Virtual Jag Core. So pressing F1 on your keyboard or a guide button on your controller, you can access the RetroArt Quick Menu. From here, scroll down to Core Options. And our first option is Fast Blitter. So if you're on a lower end PC, you will want to enable this option to get a bit of a speed boost. Next, we have the Doom Resolution Hack, so if you're going to be playing Doom, turn this option on. So you can see here it fixes Doom, so we're not at half resolution anymore and can actually enjoy the game the way it is meant to be played. Next, we could turn on a BIOS file, so if you happen to have an Atari Jag BIOS, you can put it into your RetroArch system folder, enable this option, and it should allow you to have slightly better compatibility with retail carts. And our last option is to change the system over to PAL, so... Use that as you will, I guess. Does require a content restart, so just turn it on, restart the content, you'll be in PAL mode. And that's really going to do it for our core options. So if there's options you want to have set for some games but not others, such as the Doom Resolution hack here, you can head over to Manage Core Options and save them as a Game Options file, so that way it just takes effect in this one game and not all of your games. Next, let's talk about controls real quick. So if you head into the Controls page, head down to Port 1 Controls, you can see what all of your Atari Jag um, commands are mapped to on your modern controller. So you can go through and change these as you see fit. And once you're done mapping your controls how you want, you can head up to manage remap files and either save them as a core remap file or a game remap file for your particular games and use cases. But important to note what your controls are going to be for a lot of games that use the number pad. And finally, the last option I want to talk about here before we call this video good is shaders. RetroArch has an extensive shader library. You can head into the shaders tab and enable them. And then you can begin loading them up as long as you've downloaded them from the online updater. So there's no such thing as the best shader. My personal favorite is CRT Easy Mode. I think it just provides a really good retro aesthetic without any real headaches and setup. And it looks good for native resolution content and upscaled content. So I'm just a big fan of it. But once you have found a shader that you like, again, there's no such thing as the perfect shader. Head back into the tab, click on the save button, and then you can save them as a core preset so that way every time you load up a game, that is the shader that will greet you. And that's going to do it as far as Atari Jaguar emulation on the PC version of RetroArch is concerned. It's not a very difficult system to get set up, but it does still suffer from some compatibility issues. But overall, you should be able to experience most of the Jag library without incident. But thank you so much as always for watching today's tutorial. I hope it helps you get your Atari Jag emulation project set up and running to your liking. But here at the end of the video, I do have a couple of big favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's video, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. I have loads of content coming your way and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little really goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing you all of this content. Big thank you to all of our current backers who have been supporting us. You are all so amazing. You're the truest of champs. Thank you again so much. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.